Hello everyone and welcome back to another day of Road to TCG Worlds 2018. Now unfortunately I didn't have time to stream on Wednesday so you guys I had to record this um, I had to record this in order to have the video however today if you're watching this live on Thursday in the morning I will be live streaming today in English at some point throughout the morning and midday so be on the lookout for that on twitch.tv slash tableman but for now we're gonna review this um, Zoroark toolbox deck that was piloted by Kevin Murphy um, I found the list or he showcased the list on his Twitter account I believe um, I faced him in the North American Internationals he was very friendly and we've been following each other since then <laughs> and so I, I decided to showcase this deck because it feels like it's very original, it's very uh, interesting and if you want to take a look at the Spanish video that comes up um, in a little while you can probably see me play the absolute worst game of Pokemon just because of how unfamiliar I am or I was with the deck um, I've since played a couple extra games to make sure I'm a bit more familiar with it However, no, no big promises, okay? Because I'm not the creator, or um, I definitely have played under 10 games with this deck. So, um, it has a lot of options, that's why it's like a Zoroark toolbox deck. It has Zoroark GX, of course, 210 HP, ability trade, and Bright is beating 20 damage for every Pokemon you have in play. Um, we've seen Zoroark, I think, in every deck this week. <laughs> Um, then we have a single Zoroark from Breakthrough which has the ability stand-in and can deal a ton of damage with Mindjack if your opponent um, maxes out on their bench. Then we also have a 2-2 line of Weavile. Weavile has the rule of evil attack which deals 60 damage to each Pokemon that has an ability. So you have to be very careful with managing which Pokemon you do bench and which ones you don't. Then we have 2 Tapogoko to spread damage with Flying Flip. We have two Latios with the Breakthrough attack which deals 30 and 30 to a bench Pokemon. So once again, the theme here is dealing damage to the bench. Um, we also have Necrozma GX where with its Black Ray GX attack it can deal 100 damage to all GX Pokemon on the bench. And I say GX and not EX because I don't think... Um, I can't come up with a single EX Pokemon that's actually viable right now. So pretty important that... Um, or rather pretty relevant that it says EX as well because there aren't any anymore, I think. Um, we also have three Tapu Lele, four supports, and we have two Shining Jirachi with Stellar Rain which deals 10 damage and potentially um, 40 with a choice band. And then you get to Devolve, so basically after you spread damage once with Tapu Goku, you're essentially knocking out Gardevoirs, um, even if they've gone through Kirlia just by having a choice band on the Jirachi. And we also have Espion EX for the more standard or common placed evolution strategy. So all of those are the Pokemon. You have a lot of different attacks at your disposal. Recognizing which attack is better in different situations is very important to the deck. Um, for supporters, we have four Sycamore, four N, three Guzma, and a single Bridget. For item cards, we have four Ultra Ball, three Choice Band, three Po Town, to increase damage um, that we are able to spread. Two Field Blower, a single Rescue Stretcher, a single Special Charge, a single Super Rod, and two Float Stone. And then for energy, we only have 10. That's the one thing I'm not a huge fan of in this deck. I would definitely drop at least one Latios and perhaps one Jirachi in favor of an extra two Psychic Energy, but um, I'm using the list as is. Four DC and six Basic Psychic Energy. So let's jump into a ladder. And let's try and showcase a good game for this deck. And then in the live stream tomorrow, um, or today rather, I'm actually, it's because I'm pre-recording this. Um, I'm actually not sure. I'm going to feature Lapras because I already featured it in the Spanish stream. But I'm actually not sure which other deck. So if there's any deck in particular that I haven't recently featured and you'd like to see, you can leave a comment down below and I will try my best. Um, to see like if it's competitively viable we might see it i think one of the decks that i haven't showcased is rainbow road um so far however um however with the new set coming out on friday i think um like whatever deck i do use i'll probably just um i don't know i don't even know when i will post the videos because i'd rather do Crimson Invasion content, right? That's what we're all eager for. 
and I'll probably try to update every deck with Crimson Invasion cards, at least the top 10 standard decks for sure. And then I might go into reviewing um, expanded decks for for post London and San Jose regionals. But for now, we're using this Zorak toolbox. Um, here's an Ultra Ball discarding a rare candy and a Sycamore, and my opponent using apparently a maximum rarity deck. We don't know what. Ooh. Double Lele is very nice for us though, because that's immediately 60 damage on each of them. As long as we can get a Weaval going, there's a Bridget. There's a Bridget about to happen, so we're gonna find out what kind of tech my opponent is running. The maximum rarity account is pretty cool, because I have that too. Um, oh, and it is Scardivore GX, okay. That's fair. Um, Scardivore with Vulpix and not Sylvian, apparently. Um, attaches the energy to the Lele. I, li I like that because that puts me in an awkward position where I definitely don't want to attach to my Sneasel. Um, I will, however, bench the Shining Jirachi attached to it and then I will simply end. Probably giving my opponent a better hand than he already had, but I also need to make my hand better as well. And I actually get a pretty much ideal hand. I get a ton of spreading options. I also get to set up the Zerua and I get the Poe Town to punish any evolutions and I have no um, ability Pokemon and I have to take that into account because in that game where I was telling you it's probably the one, the worst one I've played for the whole channel um, in the history of Table 1 so far, um, I would say, like I probably lost the game because I benched, um, ooh, because I benched the, the wrong Pokemon, I benched I benched on Necrozma and then I attacked with Weavile, so I damaged my own Necrozma and that ended up costing me heavily. Now, I really hope my opponent retreats into Vulpix here, that would be ideal. Losing the Latios is not really a big deal, he actually goes for a rare candy into Gallade. Okay, so Gallade can take down my Sneasel um, with a single DC. Does he have the DC? That's the question here. And does he have a supporter? That's the other question, but yeah, it's a max rarity deck, that's pretty cool. He's gonna use Premonition, gonna check the top 5 cards of his deck. And we might actually gain some, some valuable traction here. If he does manage to get the DC and knocks out our Sneasel, we might actually be able to... Like, it'd be worth it to devolve the Kalate with Jirachi potentially. To buy ourselves a turn. Um, not sure if I would want to attach the Psychic to any Pokemon. Perhaps the Zorua? But also using Zorark is perhaps not the greatest idea. Now let's see what my opponent has for supporter of the turn. I would imagine he's gonna Sycamore. Oh, but he decides to Energy Drive. I'm actually okay with that. Um, hopefully, hopefully I get a Weavile here. So I have two Weavile and four Ultra Ball. Please, I just need one of those cards. There's a Weavile, that's pretty cool to see. Um, I will not evolve into Zoroark just yet. I would have loved, now here's the Prowl City where it is affecting me. I would have loved to bench the other Sneasel to maybe potentially have another round of spreading damage, but I'm pretty happy actually. I'm pretty okay by, well, but touch the Floatstone, why not? And I will use Rule of Evil. I spread 100. I'm dealing 180 damage essentially for a single um, energy. And then another round of damage spread will leave Gardevoir in range of Shining Jirachi. And will leave um, the Leilates in range of Necrozma's GX attack. So overall, pretty good. Overall, pretty good. Um. Okay, the next turn is going to be a bit awkward though. That's definitely going to be a tiny bit awkward. Um, possibly Espion EX would be the, the right play here. If my opponent doesn't evolve into Gardevoir this turn, perhaps grabbing Espion EX would be the right play here. Or maybe just being patient and uh, benching the Sneasel. Although the odds of my Sneasel surviving are pretty low, I would say. 
So I'm gonna top deck Necrozma. I also like the Necrozma top deck. Um, although I would love a DC right here. I would love, love, love a DC. So this is what I'm gonna do. Sure, I give up potentially two prizes. Um, Latios doesn't seem too useful anymore. And I get a special charge, which is not a card I wanted to see here. I do, however, get the Guzma. So with the Guzma, it's a bit safer to bench this Nizil, and I can go ahead and knock out the Gallade with my Jirachi. So that's pretty cool. In the next turn, I can potentially get Weavile once again and then start dealing damage. Um, well, probably should have attached the Psychic to the Sneasel, uh, but I'm happy with my price card here. At least to the Coco, I think, would have been a good idea. But the Sycamore price is pretty good. The Sycamore price is definitely pretty good here. And Shining Jirachi might even survive the turn. Hmm. The Vulpix indicates to me that Shining Jirachi will... Oh! Never mind, it's gonna be a, a Guzma, most likely. Um, there's a Choice Band on the Kirlia. Oh! Oh yeah, I was gonna say two Gallade, but now it's not two Gallade. I knocked one out. <laughs> I knocked I knocked out by Devolving. So yeah, he's gonna go after the Sneasel. Which is fair. It's definitely fair. Um, okay, so this changes my potential strategy, I think. Um, like, I can see... Well, Necrozma is psychic, so it can deal with Gallade. So I think dealing 10 chip damage to this Lele could actually be pretty important here. Could actually be pretty important. Okay. Um, we got another Zoroark. I definitely want to bench Necrozma now. I will attach the energy to the Necrozma. Yeah. Um, I will Ultra Ball away the special charge and the Zoroark. I will grab the Weavile so that it's no longer in my deck. There's one DC prized, which is not ideal, of course. But yeah, here we just want to deal the 10, the 10 damage to the Tapu Lele. Uh, we did get the DC, so that would have definitely been a lot, a lot better. However, the DC is fine uh, for next turn. It's actually fine for next turn. Um, I will bench the Necrozma. And is the choice band important here? It's probably not, so I might as well just trade my field blower. It's not going to be too impactful. The damage from Podown will be very important here. I'm just going to do Stellar Rain for 10. That way, next turn, my Black Ray GX does knock out the Lele, leaves that other type of Lele 10 away from getting knocked out. And. Um, Necrozma could also potentially just deal with the Gallade. And wow, my opponent has two parallel CD and Volpix, so no Sylvian. Um, it's likely ish that he ends me, so I'm just gonna get rid of the other Necrozma. I think that's fine. Um, I want to keep Zoroark alive just in case I do get end, but my opponent actually uses Sycamore, so we're guaranteed a knockout on this. Um, Lele, the sec there's two field lower and there's a parallel CD, so this Potown should definitely stick this upcoming turn, and so the 30 damage could be important onto Akulia because then um, Jirachi plus Choice Van knocks out the Akulia. I mean, this Jirachi is definitely going down, but we do have another one in the deck, and we have Rescue Stretcher as well. And now we're gonna see a Premonition. So yeah, I'm feeling pretty good, honestly. I'm feeling pretty good. We're slowly but surely getting there. Um, him attaching energy to Gallade is actually good for us because it's so unlikely that my opponent is just able to... Well, it's not that unlikely, I guess. It's just less likely, but it's not terribly hard for Gardevoir to just outright knock out Necrozma. 
Ah, so I guess there's that. But then hopefully we can spread 20 with Coco. Um, well, that would actually be our demise. So we probably want to end this upcoming turn. Uh, especially because he used Premonition. So there's the energy drive. I'm sure he will be able to find Carnivore next turn. Um, but yeah, the damage from Potown is going to be super, super important. Oh, if I Gus here and I use the Choice Band, I can actually knock out both Lele's. But then how do I draw my last prize? With another Guzma and Zoroark knocking something out on the bench? Huh, that actually seems very viable. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I attach the Choice Band that way, and I have to Guzma because Choice Band doesn't add damage to the bench. Um, kind of want to trade my Sycamore. Yeah, I want to trade my Sycamore. And there's a the Guzma and the Jirachi. Jirachi is also pretty important here. So I'm just going to Black Ray. I'm going to get two, uh, four prize cards. So yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool Black Ray for four prize cards. We had a ton of energy prized. Never a good thing. And I mean, if my opponent doesn't end me, he loses. Yeah. Well, not necessarily. Yeah, actually he does. Yeah, the Vulpix is going to be our target here. However, it's very likely that Necrozma just goes down. Yeah, so we might still not win. Um, there's the Octillery, there's the damage from Poe Town. There's another Ralts. Yeah, we're definitely gonna see an end. However, can my opponent find Gardevoir, Fairy, and DC? That Fairy on the Galate was terrible. Actually terrible. He still has a lot of cards left though, so we might not win. We actually might not win yet. We actually might not win, but at least I think we're making the right calls here. I think. There's a Gardevoir, there's a 30 damage, which could be important as well. Um, I have two choice bands left, potentially. I have two choice bands left. Rescue Stretcher for Lele for N, I would assume. No, he puts three Pokemon back. What? He puts three. He goes ahead and puts three Pokemon back. Then he's gonna Premonition. You need N. You don't win without N. You generally do not win without N. Okay, so my opponent found the knockout. Does he have N? If he doesn't have N, he loses. If he does have N, I could maybe still have a chance, but no, he doesn't. He doesn't. Okay, so we win. Pretty cool. It would be cool to knock out the Gardevoir with Jirachi, right? It would actually be pretty cool. So let's try to do that. Um, I'll discard the Zoroark. I mean, to do that, we need a choice band. We do not get the choice band, so I'll just bench this guy, attach this, and then Guzma up the Ralts because we're still dealing 60 damage. So, yeah, well played to my opponent. Um, that was a pretty cool match to showcase the 
to showcase the potential of the deck um, it definitely has some weird strategies and you have to find the right win conditions but as long as you have the plan and you execute it well you have a chance um, I think my opponent played awfully that last turn I don't know why you would rescue stretcher three Pokemon back and not just get a card of I mean get a Lele to find an end to end your opponent down to one card because you have to recognize what he needs in order to win and you have to reduce the chances of that um, but hey would take the wins right um so yeah don't forget to leave a like guys i will see you guys later on the stream sorry it's only one game but i'm pressed in time that's also why i didn't um stream today however i will be i hope you guys join me on the stream later today and if you want to um leave deck suggestions down below um to showcase on the stream okay thank you guys so much and bye bye